victims of the massacre of the of the massacre that happened at the Mukuru Kwanjenga is currently ongoing and Anwe Goro is there, the chair of COG. Let's listen in. That might help in the investigation. It is only through collective effort that we can identify and bring those responsible for these heinous crimes to justice. As women leaders, we call on the government and relevant authorities to provide support and counseling services to the families of the victims in this time of mourning. It is essential that we come together as a community to support those who are grieving. We are also committed to ensuring that there is enhanced capacities for all sectors in government and in society to continue advocating for the protection and empowerment of individuals and especially women across Kenya. We will work tirelessly to ensure that the rights and safety of all citizens are upheld and that violence is eradicated from our society. The safety and security of every woman, boy, girl, child, and man, and indeed every citizen, must be ensured. And we demand immediate and decisive action to prevent such atrocities from occurring in the future. The women leaders of Kenya, thank you. Um, in the midst of this, uh, we, we are encouraged that the DCI was able to move with speed uh, since the discovery of the first bodies on Saturday. And uh, we are glad that the first suspect has been arrested this morning. The shocking revelation that this could have started way back in 2022 and the first victim having been the wife of the said suspect and that as at to date he claims that he has done this to 42 women takes us back to a conversation we've had with the national police service over the years the need to have gender desks in every police station or police posts of well-trained gender officers because if that had been the case and there was a way of collecting this information as it comes in these police stations and police posts over the, the months and then the years, then a certain trade would have been identified early enough mm. to tell you that there's a certain Something person targeting women. Mm. Uh, because then when you have reports of about 10 women disappearing from different families, in one month and then maybe another five and then another six then you are able to see a particular trend and you start working on it so we are going to be asking the national police service going forward to revive the gender desks that we had created way mm. back after passing the sexual offenses act mm. and ensure that they work closely with the ministry of gender so that these officers are well trained they get the necessary budgetary support, mm. and we have some form of collecting data that comes every day into police stations so that we are able to have um, data that is um, able to uh, uh, let us know where we are on gender-based violence, for example. And we are not saying that we shouldn't... Gender is not just about women, by no. the way. Mm. It's also about men. Mm. So we are able to also look at crimes from a gender lens mm. and be able to identify where that could be coming from. So really, I think from here as the women leaders, we are really going to push for that to happen and happen very soon. We are also going to push as the supplementary budget comes back on the floor of the house, we can make sure there's some money put aside for this kind of information and this kind of arrangement mm. so that going forward, we, 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 we can also deal with femicide and other gender-related uh, crimes that uh, seem to target certain gender mm. so that they can stop. And, uh, and, and we believe that will be the way forward. We also hope that from here we're also going to know, was it this one singular uh, suspect who has done these crimes alone? Or could it be a group of certain people or certain persons 
uh, we, we hope that we can get to the bottom of this problem and really take this opportunity to condole with all those families mm -hmm. that have been affected mm -hmm. and, and, and stand by the statement, of course, read by Governor Waiguru on the need for emotional support and psychological support and to even economic families. support to the families that have been affected. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kwa majina anaitwa Salma na mimi ni mtetezi wa wanawake na nikisema kwanza nipongeze viongozi wa kike ambao wameweza kujitokeza na kuweza kulizungumzia swala kama hili. Kama watetezi tumekuwa tikilia kwa muda mrefu iwapo mwanamke anadhulumika na kuweza kunyanyasika kwamba viongozi huwa hawajitokezi. Lakini safari hii tumeona kuna viongozi ambao wamewacha makazi yao leo ni Jumatatu, wameacha shughuli zao wamekuja kuongelea hili swala. La pili ni kuaj kwa ama kuhimiza serikali. Tunaelewa kwamba ikiwa vifo ni takriban watu 42 lazima kuna vyenye mnajua mm -hmm. hili jambo vyenye linatendeka. Tumeona kuna SIM card ambazo zimepatikana. Hakuna SIM card ambao mtu anachukua bila kujiregister. Wewe unapeanaje SIM card uh, kadhaa kwa mtu mmoja ambaye anatumia kitambulisho kimoja? Mm -hmm. Kuna simu zinapatikana. Tunajua kuna MMI codes ambazo unaweza kutrace kama wa vitengo vya usalama. Tunafanya intelligence work gani? Kwa hivyo kitu ambacho sisi tunahofia kama wanawake, watetezi na viongozi katika hii nchi yetu, kesho tunaenda wapi? Tutajuaje next ni mheshimiwa Anwaiguru ama mwingine ama mwingine tena. Tutakuwa na imani gani kwamba tutakapokwenda katika public eyes kwamba sisi life zetu ziko protected. So sisi tunachokitaka ni kwamba wanawake because now this is turning into a femicide. Wanawake haki zao ziangaziwe, ziangaliwe ni vipi zinakuwa protected na kila aina binadamu kwa sababu we can never repeat history. Tumemaliza shakahola. Tumekuja katika hii mkuru. How can it go like this? Every day kuna toka massacres and the country we are having it's a democratic country so we want to end this and we end now. Asante. Thank you.